Alrighty, well here is my latest uh, cargo dropping airplane built after the demise of the Skyvan. Wingspan is 45 inches. Length is 38 inches. Fuselage is 5 inches wide and 5 inches tall and is constructed from one uh, continuous piece of Dollar Tree foam board that is just radiused around and bent one, two, three, four times and joined at one seam down there at the bottom. Each of these wings is uh, 20 inches to take advantage of the 20 inch width of that Dollar Tree foam board and I have it bent into a, uh, an airfoil. The um, livery is literally just some colored packing tape that sticks on there. It's nice and slick. It slick, sticks better to papered foam board than to painted foam board, um, but it does seem to work out. The tail is actually Depron. The control surfaces are Depron just for rigidity, although foam board would have worked fine. Um, but everything else is just Dollar Tree foam board, so it's about a $5 airframe. And she has an elevator, uh, dedicated ailerons, which are also I have on a, a gyro with just pretty modest attracted mid flaps for takeoff and full flaps for landing and slow flight. The rudder is fully movable and is also mixed with the throttle for ground handling and additional yaw authority in the air. You may notice this uh, elevator and rudder servo setup is kind of bogus because it's so far away from the control horns, but I only did that because the cargo dropping action down here needs to be free of any push rods or control horns or anything like that. So I put it on top and I put it far forward to be clear of the cargo release apparatus. Also note that although this is really, really flexible, it would be terrible as a push rod, but since the elevator is almost always only going up, this is basically a pull cable. It's very rarely do you give any down elevator where that needs to act as a, um, as a put, true push rod. With the rudder, it is what it is, but I've got the, uh, you know, it pushes one way and pulls the other way, but I've got the authority of the differential thrust from the motor, so that compensates for that. Um, up front, I've got two holes for the uh, pilots to see out of. Now really just for cooling air. The cooling air goes in and up against the batteries and also through this channel where the, the speed controllers are located about right here. Closer to the uh, batteries, the better, rather than mount mounting them close to the motors. The um, camera you'll see later, the Loadmaster camera goes down in here and looks back into the cargo area. These are two 2200 milliamp hour three cell lipos and those are hooked up in parallel this way. That gives me easily 10 minutes of aggressive flight time. It takes them down to about four. The motors are RC timer 1400 kV 28 by 26 millimeter 10 turn motors that draw 230 watts on the ground at full throttle and each generate 800 grams of thrust static on the ground. So 1,600 grams total thrust. Each is turning in an 8x38 slow flight prop. They're not counter-rotating, which would be cool, although certainly not essential. Most real twins don't have counter-rotating props, and it flies perfectly fine. The cargo bay is about 16 inches long, about 4 inches tall, 5 inches wide. Have some magnets right up in the front to help hold the cargo down to the floor until it's pulled out. The parachute mounting apparatus is simply this uh, rubber band that hooks up over the uh, little, little pin right here. And then when servo is activated, it just releases this uh, rubber band and the parachute which is held here falls out the back and then pulls the cargo out with it. Here's the landing gear, carbon fiber axles, Pretty common sense how to put those together. This, these struts are constructed out of a carbon fiber um, helicopter blade, 450 size. So they're like 300 millimeters long, I think, each with the ends cut off. 
and I've hot glued in a strip of metal. This is just a piece of scrap titanium hanging out and then it's safety wired to a carbon arrow shaft um, spar that's inside the wing. So the wing is actually just attached with two-sided tape. It doesn't bear any real weight at the fuselage. All of the force is borne underneath the aircraft onto the spars up to the or out on the struts up to the spar. There's the aileron servo buried in the bottom of the wing, the flap servo buried in the bottom of the wing. Here's the uh, wing joiner and spar, which is a carbon aero shaft. It's about six millimeters in diameter and goes about two thirds of the way out each wing. That's where the safety wire comes up through the bottom and then back down through and holds the strut onto the spar. There's a standard spectrum receiver that just pokes up through the top. And then all of the wires I kind of stuffed down in this, in that avionics deck, like as it were, up, up in there, which is a I think a good way to construct these cargo planes. Put all your electronics on one level, and put the cargo on another level. <clears throat> and there's an extra piece of carbon to help kind of stiffen the wings against torsion. Uh, a couple of neodymium magnets to hold it all shut, and the speed controllers are right down in there, and so they've got extensions that go from speed controllers out to the motor, speed controller out to the motor inside the wing. It's a nice thing about this wing construction too, is it's got a channel in the front to put your power systems and a channel in the back, put your servo wires and such. Um, here's the gyro, so just a rate gyro, eSky brand, nothing special there.